and this is what Hannah has sent in and she said please 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 show my artwork so this is it and what we have here she gave a, a very detailed description as well it's a mythical skull and just in case you don't know exactly what a skull is I'm sure you all do but of course it's that very important bone that keeps our brains very very safe so it's a mythical skull and it's sitting on a pile of cherry blossoms and she wanted to show that sometimes beauty can exist where there is death and she's got a cog right there for an eye and that is to represent all the machines that help keep us safe and healthy and right now across hospitals all over the world there are a lot of machines keeping people safe and healthy so this is her artwork so thank you very much Hannah from Melbourne and I have another picture here in fact two pictures in one and this is Huda and she is in year six and she lives in Accra at, and goes to Al Rayyan International School and she has sent these be this beautiful artwork in so it's two in one and of course we have an elephant there and this to me looks like the tree of life and also we have the night sky and if you can see right here there is a bird flying so we are going to be having a story about that so hi to Kez who has just joined us and is bringing her little people in too so you're just in time for our made up story and just so you know, sometimes these made up stories are literally five minutes before I actually sit down and I'm looking at the pictures and trying to decide, OK, which picture can uh, which pictures put together can make some kind of story. So we are going to begin. And our first story is about an elephant. And this elephant lived in a beautiful country and it was hot and sunny and warm and people who have been to hot sunny warm countries or who live in hot sunny warm countries know that it's very easy to be a little bit lazy when it's cold you want to move around and keep warm but when it's hot you slow right down you take things easy but the elephant thought hmm i wish that i was really clever i wish that i was so clever that i could find ways that i could work without having to huff and puff and pant because it's so hot but I don't know where I can find any wisdom at all because in those days the elephant was not as wise as the elephant is today and so the elephant did what you and I might do how do we find wisdom well we have to go on a walk or on an adventure to find it and so the elephant left his home and off he went and he walked 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 for days and days and weeks and weeks and it was hot and my word he flapped his ears trying to keep cool when suddenly he heard a voice and he said who's there what's that and he looked around and he heard and he looked and said wait who's there I can hear something down and he looked onto the ground and would you believe it but there was a skull a skull was on the ground in front of him and the skull said pick me up and the elephant was shocked but the elephant wrapped his trunk around the skull and raised it up and said you can talk and the skull said of course I can talk I am a talking skull and talking skulls exist in a lot of stories and the elephant said but but how can you talk you must be very very clever <laughs> I came from the land of wisdom <gasps> the land of wisdom that is exactly the place that I am looking for where is it <laughs> you have to keep on walking and so the elephant and the skull walked and walked and walked and walked for many more days and many more weeks until the elephant began to notice that the sun was fading. It was getting colder and it was getting darker. And then soon the elephant found itself in a very strange and unusual place because the elephant had never seen a night sky. And he heard the strange owls of the evening, do it, do it, of the owls and the snuffling in the bushes. And because it was dark, he couldn't really see very much at all. And he was a little bit scared. But the skull 
said, don't worry, this place is fine. They kept on walking when suddenly an owl came and landed on a branch right in front of them and said, elephant, why are you here? And as we all know, the owl is known as one of the wisest birds in the world. And the elephant explained the situation and said that the skull had led him here because this was the land of wisdom. And the owl said, yes, it is indeed. You are absolutely right and you are welcome. How much wisdom would you like? And the elephant said, well, lots of wisdom. So much wisdom because with all that wisdom, I can tell stories to lots of people and I can do amazing things in my very, very hot country. And so the owl said, wait right here. And whoosh, the owl flew off up into the sky, up around the moon and the stars, and the owl plucked some of the stars from the sky. Because as maybe some of us know, the stars hold an awful lot of wisdom because the stars have seen a lot of things over thousands and thousands of years. And the owl brought back those stars and went over to the elephant and pop, pop, placed the stars in the elephant's eyes. And when the elephant blinked, Suddenly, all kinds of thoughts and dreams and imaginings began to go on inside the elephant's brain. And the elephant was delighted and said, yes, I think that I know so much more than I did before. And he said, thank you to the owl. And he said, thank you to that talking skull. And the talking skull, well, said, now that you have brought me here, I don't really want to go back to that hot country so please leave me right here in the land of wisdom and so the elephant did the elephant lowered his trunk and left the skull on a beautiful pile of flowers and then the elephant headed home and if anybody is is uh, is privileged enough is honored enough to come into contact with a beautiful elephant have a look in the elephant's eyes and you will see a great wisdom as sparkling as that elephant's eyes and the stars inside are sparkling back at you because elephants are indeed incredibly wise and i am sure that maybe some of you guys watching at home you might also have some twinkling sparkling eyes so maybe it's not just the elephant who is full of wisdom so there you go that is my story for you today and i can see that karen and georgie are watching and georgie i know loves elephants so there you go you can have that story for you today georgie um so what story am I going to tell you this evening? Well, we have had so much artwork from the from Al Ryan School in Accra in Ghana that I thought today I will tell a story from Ghana. And which story would that be? Well, perhaps some of you at home have heard of Anansi. Kweku Anansi? Well, Kweku Anansi, his name was Kweku. Kweku Anansi was called Kweku because he was born on a Wednesday. And just in case you're not 100% certain, Anansi is a spider, a trickster spider. Anansi the spider is loved by people across the entire world because Anansi the spider is very, very smart. Anansi the spider loves to play tricks and jokes on people and sometimes Anansi the spider lands up in a lot of trouble and if he's not in trouble, then certainly he's getting other people in trouble too. So this is one of the Anansi stories. And if you know any other Anansi stories, then of course you can comment and let me know or send me a message um, after you've heard this one. Or just let me know what you think about this one. <laughs> so this story is also a story from a long time ago when all the wisdom in the world did not exist in the world. It was right up in heaven and God kept all the wisdom in a great big calabash, a gourd made of a dried vegetable. Every piece of wisdom was kept inside the calabash and if God wanted to give you a piece of wisdom, well, he might ask for something in return or perhaps if he was feeling a bit generous, he might gift you a tiny piece of wisdom. But Anansi the spider thought, hmm, how wonderful would it be to be the wisest creature in the entire world? And he thought, 
I think that I should get that calabash. And so he began to spin a web and he wove it. And once it had started to reach heaven, he began to climb higher and higher and higher and higher and higher until soon he was standing in front of God. And there he saw the calabash full of wisdom. And he thought, oh, if I could own that, then I would be as wonderful as God. And so Anansi the spider approached God and said, God, would you mind giving me the calabash of wisdom? Ho! Oh, how God laughed! He opened his mouth and he roared and it was like thunder echoing across the skies. Ha ha ha! Nancy, you think that I am just going to give you my calabash of wisdom? Are you mad? Of course not. This wisdom belongs right here with me and you should not be here in heaven anyway. Go down your web, little spider. Go back to earth. Well, that annoyed Anansi. Imagine being dismissed just like that, as if he was nothing. And he said, look, God, I will do anything. I will prove that I am worthy of owning that calabash of wisdom. Set me any task, any challenge, and I will succeed. And if I do succeed, then you have to promise that you will give me that calabash. Now God loved a challenge and he thought no way is a Nancy the spider ever going to succeed, especially not when I have all the wisdom in the world anyway. And so he agreed on the condition that he would be the one to set the challenge and a Nancy accepted. God thought what would be the perfect challenge for this silly little spider and he had one. He reached down and he pulled out a tiny little grain of rice and he said, Anansi, Kweku Anansi, if you can take this grain of rice and turn it into an ox, I will give you the calabash of wisdom. And Anansi the spider, he took that grain of rice and he put it into his pocket and he said, God, get ready because when I return, I am taking that calabash of wisdom back down to the earth with me. And he started to climb down that ladder of his, that ladder that he had woven. And when he reached the earth, he thought, hmm, yeah, God dismissing me as if I'm nothing, I will show God. Then he began to think, how, how am I going to turn this grain of rice into an ox? It's almost impossible. I mean, it's just a silly little tiny grain of rice. And he began to think that perhaps he had made a mistake because of course, if he failed, then he would be a laughingstock and God would never ever take him seriously ever again. So he thought, right. I have to succeed. And as he was walking along with that little grain of rice, he saw a farmer and the farmer was out in his fields and he was feeding his chickens and he was weeding his plants. And a Nancy had an idea. He went over to the farmer and he said, farmer, yes, it's me, Kweku Anansi, and I have just come from God and he has given me a very, very important task, but I, I need somewhere to sleep tonight and my journey is very far. I have many days ahead of me. I don't suppose you would be so kind and let me stay here with you. And of course, the farmer was a very hospitable person and said, Quick, Nancy, of course, you can have water, you can have food, you will stay here and you will be my guest. And Nancy the spider, he said, okay, but the thing is, is that I have to take this very, very important grain of rice back to God but I have to go a long way round in order to do it. Will I be safe here with my grain of rice? And the farmer said, hey, there are no thieves around here. That grain of rice, it will be perfectly, perfectly safe. You stay and make yourself comfortable, brother Anansi. And so Anansi did. Oh, that night, they were enjoying themselves. They were feasting and drinking and laughing and telling stories and singing songs. Even he was dancing with his eight spider legs. Oh, and Nancy had a great evening. And that night, he took his grain of rice. He placed it on the windowsill. And soon 
He closed his eyes and he pretended to be asleep. And when the farmer was fast asleep, he took that grain of rice and flicked it outside. So it landed on the ground outside where he was sleeping. Well, of course, you know what happened next. Those chickens, well, they were busy walking around the compound. And one of those chickens, well, he spotted that little grain of rice. His eyes lit up. He gobbled it up. He swallowed it down. And in the morning, well, Anansi woke up and stretched his eight long legs. And then he turned to get the grain of rice. And of course, it wasn't there. Oh, oh, he began to make noise. He was shouting and screaming. And the farmer ran in and said, Brother Anansi, what is wrong? What's the problem? Oh, oh my goodness. It's the grain of rice. My precious grain of rice. I'm supposed to take it back to God. And your chickens have eaten it. Oh, what am I going to do? The farmer was horrified. He was embarrassed. He felt so bad because he knew the value of this grain of rice. And he said, oh, brother Anansi, I'm so sorry. Perhaps I can give you another grain of rice or, or even a sack of rice. Please, please accept this, brother Anansi. But Anansi said, no, I have to have that, that particular grain of rice. God is not going to accept anything else. And the farmer said, well, I, I guess in that case, I have no option but to give you that chicken. And Nancy, well, inside, yes, yes, he was thoroughly excited. But on the outside, oh, farmer, I hate to do this to you. I'm sorry that it has to be that way, but I accept. I will take that chicken. And so he took the chicken. He tied a string around the chicken's neck and off they went walking along the way and the Nancy, hey, he was feeling good. Dan, 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 dan. Oh, he was jumping and hopping and skipping from side to side as he held on to that chicken. And he came to another farm. And there at this farm, he saw there were a whole herd of goats. And he said to the farmer, oh, farmer, do you know something? I am on my way to take this precious chicken to God. It is a gift for the great creator himself. However, my journey is long and far and I am tired. Please, may I stay here for the night? <gasps> of course, brother Anansi, the farmer said. And she welcomed Anansi in. She gave him something to eat, something to drink. And she said, but you know, brother Anansi, even though the chicken is for God, that chicken cannot stay inside my house because my house is nice and clean and that chicken is a chicken. And you know what chickens do. And Anansi said, yes, but it's a very special chicken. Anansi, I tell you what, I'm going to tie that chicken inside the place where I keep my goats. I tell you, that chicken is going to be perfectly safe. There is nobody here that's going to disturb that chicken. And so Anansi agreed. And so she took the chicken and she went and tied it safely and placed it on a little shelf high above the goats so the goats would not disturb it. And that night, Anansi, he lay down and he pretended to go to sleep. And when he heard the farmer snoring, he crept out of his bed. He went over to where his chicken was and he loosened the string and the chicken well, now that it was free, it escaped and it ran away. And Anansi, he crept back to his bed and he fell asleep. And in the morning, when the farmer woke up, all she saw was Anansi sobbing in a corner. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, my chicken, my chicken. What am I going to do? <gasps> Brother Anansi, why are you crying? What is wrong? Oh, you, you told me that my chicken would be safe. You took my chicken and you tied it where you keep the goats. And I went to check and there is no chicken there, only a string. My chicken has run away and it's your fault. What am I going to do? And she said, oh, brother Anansi, I am so sorry. I did not expect anything like this to happen. I'm sure I tied that chicken nice and tight, but... I, I feel so sorry for your loss. 
Here, I tell you what. Why don't you take one of my goats? Take one of my goats and that will make me feel much, much better. Oh, well, um, I, I suppose if, if that makes you feel better, then I accept, said Anansi. And he took a string and he tied it around the goat's neck. He said goodbye to the farmer and off he went. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, he was skipping and jumping, feeling oh so good and happy. And he kept on moving and moving until he came to another farm. And when he got there, he saw there were cows and bulls out in the fields. And he went to the farmer and he said, farmer, oh, you see this beautiful goat? You see how gorgeous and, and smooth her coat is? This is a very special goat. I'm taking this goat to God himself as a gift. But my journey is long and far and I need somewhere to stay tonight. Please, may I stay here? Of course, brother Anansi, the farmer said. And the same thing happened. Anansi was given a bed and food and something to drink. And the goat was kept very securely in with the cows and the bulls. But in the middle of the night, when Anansi had pretended to sleep, he crept out to where they were kept and he began to make a lot of noise like a snake. And the cows were terrified. They started mooing, they started stamping, trying to get rid of this terrible creature that was in their midst and in their haste and in their anxiety and under all this pressure and stress that they were under, they trampled the poor goat. And in the morning, when the farmer and Anansi went to take that goat so that Anansi, poor Anansi, could continue his long journey, they saw the goat and Anansi, ah, what am I going to do? Oh, this goat, he was a very precious goat and he lamented and he cried and the tears were flowing down his face. The farmer felt awful and he said, oh, brother Anansi, I feel so sorry. Here, please, I beg you, this goat was for God and God deserves the finest gift. I want you to take my ox. Take this beautiful fine ox as a gift for God. And then Nancy, he wiped off his tears and said, an ox, oh, only because you feel better by doing this. And he said, thank you. And he took the ox, he tied a rope around its neck. He left the farm and when he was out of sight, he began to spin a web that led up to heaven. And he started to climb, pulling that big, ox behind him higher and higher and higher and higher and higher until boop, he reached heaven and he heaved and he strained and he pulled that bull right up after him pa, and the bull reached heaven too and immediately Anansi raced over to God and said eh -heh, a grain of rice has become a bull God I think you owe me something. And of course, God is not one to break his word. And he was annoyed with himself for having trusted, for, for having believed that Anansi would not succeed, but he had no choice. And so he took that calabash full of wisdom and he tied it around Anansi's neck. And he said, Anansi, you take that wisdom, but be very, very careful with it. And Anansi, he said, hey, I have the calabash of wisdom. Of course, I'm going to take care of it because all the wisdom in the world is mine. And he started to climb down that web back to the earth. And he was so excited, so full of joy. When he reached the earth, he started skipping and jumping and dancing and having such a great time shaking from side to side that he tripped over a tree root and the calabash landed on the ground and bah! it broke and all the wisdom in the world began to spill away. It began to find new homes in the animals and the plants and the humans. It went everywhere, everywhere. And Anansi, he tried to catch, to catch, to catch just one tiny piece of wisdom, but he only caught a little piece. 
but he kept that peace for himself. But for Anansi, hmm, thanks to Anansi, every single one of us has also managed to have just a tiny little piece of wisdom. And the wisdom, well, we all have a different piece. And some of us, we might not yet know exactly which piece of wisdom we have got, whether it's the wisdom to play an instrument, or the wisdom to speak languages, or the wisdom to do all kinds of sporting activities. But once you find what piece of wisdom you have been given, make the most of it. And perhaps if you see a little spider, it might be an auntie. So it'd be good to say a little thank you to Anansi. So that is my story for you today. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that uh, if you don't know your wisdom yet, you are going to find it very, very soon. And for those of you who do know what piece of wisdom you've got, then make the most of it. But yes, I will see you um, tomorrow. Um, please, if you have not yet sent me any artwork, send it to me. Thank you very much to Hannah, 16, who lives in Melbourne, and to Huda, who lives in Accra in year six. Thank you for your beautiful pieces of art that led to the story earlier on. And for everybody else, thank you very much, and we'll see you later. Okay, good night.